Hello Roots, it is so good to be able to see you again, although we'd much rather do it in person, it's so good to be able to see you all online and today it's my pleasure to be able to lead us in the creative worship slot and but um, just before we start you will need a pen, you'll need something to write down with and you'll need a bible, you've got three seconds, quickly go and get them. Right, in Exodus 17, verse 12, Exodus is the second book of the Bible, so if you turn to Exodus chapter 17 uh, in your Bibles, and then it says this. Moses' arms soon became so tired he could no longer hold them up, so Aaron and Hur found a stone for him to sit on. Then they stood on each side of Moses, holding up his hands, so his hands held steady until sunset. So basically, at this time, uh, Joshua was fighting a group of people called the Amalekites, and when Moses had his arms lifted up in the air, God was with Joshua, and they were winning the war. But when his arms came down, it meant they were losing it. So as Moses, he was quite old at this point, he grew tired, his arms started to go down, so Joshua started losing. So Aaron and her, uh, Moses' mates, decided to come and say, oh, you know what, we can help him out here. And they got him to sit down and they were able to lift both of his arms up and help the Israelites to win this battle. And I was just thinking, we, we all need people like Aaron and her in our lives. I know I certainly do people who, when we're struggling, they can just lift our arms up and in prayer and just to support us. But we can also be like Aaron and her to others. So on your piece of paper, I want you to write down three people's names, maybe someone that's struggling in your family with the help who you can just pray for and stand with just by lifting your arms up with them. Or maybe it's a friend from school who doesn't know God and you can just support them by praying for them and just being with them. and. Yeah, just write three people down who you can pray for and just lift your arms up in prayer for them. And I'm just going to pray over all of these people now. So God, I thank you for each and every person that um, everyone's written down, Lord. And I just pray, God, that you'd help us to just support them and to just lift our arms up in prayer to them and just lift their arms up, Lord. Particularly people that don't know you or are just struggling with the health or it could be anything uh, in their lives Lord, that you'd just be with them Lord and you'd support them and you'd just give us the words to say to them to encourage them and we just pray God that you'll just be with each and every one of our young people Lord and we just thank you for everything you're doing. Amen. Thank you so much for the creative worship Jacob. We are going to be moving into a time of sun worship right now. Um, please do feel free to continue doing the creative worship at this time. Um, you may stand, you may sit, you may sing, uh, dance, draw, art, just get creative in any which way that you feel best helps you to connect with God.
I'm set apart From the ash I am born again Forever safe in the Savior's hands You are more than my words could say I'll follow you, Lord, for all my days I'll fix my eyes following your ways Forever free in unending grace Today our talk is on Psalm 34. Um, throughout the, the talk um, I'll, I've got some questions that will help you just go a bit deeper and just for you to get involved um, and to use your minds and um, to explore what you think about what is being said here. So in those moments if you're on your own and you're someone that likes journaling or writing then take notes. If you're with other people then you can always share with them and reflect on your feelings and what you hear if you'd like to as well. Um, so first off, let's start and just reflect in the last week, what has been on your heart the most and what are you worried about?
So today we're going to look briefly at Psalm 34 and how we can use it to understand and know God's character much more, but also what we, it can help us to know what it can look like to, to come to Jesus, to come to God. So um, if you're new to Psalms, Psalms are a book in the Bible, in the Old Testament, so in the first half. And there's 150 songs and poems and the Psalms can be helpful to us in our relationship with God because they express a whole range of human emotions. Some people have suggested that there is a Psalm for, for everything, for every occasion, every season, um, every moment. And people who really study the Psalms, so theologians, they divide them into lots of different categories. And for me, the coolest thing about Psalms is their layout and their structure and how they're written. So before we jump into, into the Psalms, let's have a little think about music. So where you are, whoever you're with, on your own, reflect, um, discuss what music do you love, who's your favourite artist or band, um, what kind of music is your favourite and also do you have a favourite song and what do you, um, why do you think that music is so powerful? course I was trying to when I was writing this I was trying to think of all the different kinds of like genres of music in the world and I was like oh there's jazz there's soul rap hip-hop drill grime trap like instrumentals indie rock metal um like film soundtracks there's classical there's country latin heavy metal techno chill out motown northern soul ska reggae there's there's like afro beats there's, there's so much um I could go on for days. I wonder what kind of music you guys came up with that, that you love. Um, so just like music with all its diverse styles and types, um, they can really like show and reflect our emotions. Music gets us excited, it gets us emotional, um, it makes us feel sad and it can also make us think if the lyrics are really challenging or like thought provoking. Um, and Psalms are no different to that. Essentially, they're like Old Testament songs for worship. Um, and these songs touch on a lot of different themes and emotions. And you can say possibly that you get happy Psalms and sad Psalms, and some Psalms are kind of in between. Um, and you also get Psalms that are an affirmation of who God is. So um, one of my Psalms I learned, I learned growing up um, was Psalm 23 and the first line of it I have written on my window is the Lord is my shepherd that's a statement an affirmation of who God is um, and um, then you also get individual and community psalms and laments where people are kind of just pouring out their sorrow and their sadness um, then you also get psalms of thanksgiving and, and praise celebrating what God has done in history what God has done in people's lives personally um and yeah a bit, a bit like lyrics today they're just packed with with emotions and um lots of different ways of saying the same thing um so yeah and there's 150 and you don't really need to read them in order while they are in that order they're distinct um and um i guess a bit like an like an album where you can listen to any song so why don't we jump in and read um some um, grab your physical bible or phone or follow on the screen we'll have the the words that i'm reading 
for you to follow. Cool, let's go. So Psalm 34 says, <clears throat> I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name forever. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man called and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and he delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed are those who take refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you his holy people, for those who fear him lack nothing. The lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. On to verse 11 now. Come, my children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Whoever of you loves life and desires to see many good days, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from telling lies. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are attentive to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil to blot out their name from the earth. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. The righteous may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers them from, from them all. He protects all their bones. Not one of them will be broken. Evil will slay the wicked. The foes of the righteous will be condemned. The Lord redeems his servant. No one who takes refuge in him will be condemned. Cool. Why not have a moment to yourself and think, looking back, what stood out to you most in this song? So I wonder what stood out for you. Um, I see so much just richness in this. Um, I'm a visual person, so some of the stuff that when I read, I just see pictures of it. Like, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. And in verse 1, it says, I will extol the Lord at all times. I will praise. Um, his praise will always be on my lips. This is kind of like a real statement of praise to God. And then in verse three, um, David, the writer says, glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. This is kind of like an invitation um, to know the Lord, to glorify him when he says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. He's telling others um, about God. And then in, in verse four and five, and six, we kind of have a bit of a testimony where he says, I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. He says in verse six, this poor man called and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all his troubles. These are just some of the things that stood out for me. I bet there's some even cooler things that have stood out for you guys from reading this psalm. So one of the things that helps us understand anything that is written in the Bible um, a bit better is to kind of know the, the backstory, the background behind it, why it was written, who it was written, um, who it was written by, who it was written for. And so the background of this psalm is really cool. Um, it's written by David, who wrote a majority of the psalms, not all of them, but most of them. Um, and the 
background behind this psalm actually comes from another book in the Bible called 1 Samuel, um, chapter 21, verses 10 to 15. I'm going to like summarise it for us. Um, so the whole the situation is actually a bit embarrassing for David, the, the way that this psalm came about. So he's running away from King Saul, who wants to kill him. And he goes to Achish, um, King of Gath. When he's there, he's spotted. So he's trying to get away. He's like trying to hide. He doesn't want to be known and seen. Um, and when he's on the run, he gets spotted in this new place. Um, and um, the servants of Achish see him and they're like, is this David? Is this the famous David? Um, and he, he says, Saul, kings, ki Saul kills um, by the thousand, David by the ten thousand, and, and kind of references something um, that David has said before. So when um, David realises that he's been recognised, he panics and fearing the worst, right then and there, he pretends to go crazy. So he starts making marks on the door, he's dribbling, letting saliva run down his beard and foaming at the mouth. Um, and then Achish takes one look at him and says to his servants, like, can't you see this guy's crazy? Why did you let him in here? Um, he says, don't you think I've got enough, like, crazy people um, to put up with sarcastically? He says that. Um, well, then he says, just get him out of there. Um, so by lying, David gets away, gets away with being recognised and he gets out of that situation. And he's written in that, he's written that psalm in response to this experience and, and others, um, and other times um, when God has saved him from things. Um, so I um, wonder what you think about that. Has there been a time in your life where you have pretended to be something that you're not or lied to get out of a dodgy situation? Okay, have a think, discuss. Cool, so I hope you oh, came up with some really great stories. Would love to hear them. <laughs> um, one of the bits of, of this whole psalm which stood out for me um, was verse 18, where it says, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and he saves those who are crushed in spirit. Um, I love the wording of it. He says, He saves those who have got broken hearts. And who are crushed in their spirit and I thought wow how interesting to put that in this psalm and I love I love words I love finding out the origin of words and the meaning behind them and so I was fascinated about the word crushed because it's so physical um it's quite a strong like sort of sensation to put in in a in a psalm um and so yeah I was looking at similar words um that are yeah a bit like crushed and there was the word deformed compressed oppressed overwhelmed disappointed embarrassed hurt ashamed trampled put down squashed made small have you ever felt any of those things so the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and he saves those who are overwhelmed, disappointed, ashamed, put down, hurt, squashed, feeling trampled and made small. But to kind of really get to the depths of what he is saying and to go deeper it's really good to know that in the original writings instead of the word crushed and actually in some of the translations the word contrite is used contrite means to express remorse or regret 
for something. Maybe even to feel guilty or ashamed or sheepish about something that we have done or said. Our own actions. So I wonder if some of those feelings match a bit with the previous question that I asked about situations that we've been in where we had to pretend to be something that we were not. Just like David trying to save himself through his own methods, so acting crazy, I reckon we've all been in times or experienced situations in our lives where we are trying to get out of it our own way. But he, David, he acknowledges um, that only the Lord can truly save him. And that's when he cries out to him. In 1 John it says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It says, if, if we claim that we are free of sin, we only really fall in ourselves. This is from the message, it says, on the other hand, if we admit our sins, he won't let us down. Um, he'll be true to himself. He'll forgive our sins. If we claim that we've never sinned, we are out and out contradicting God and we make him out to be a liar. A claim like that can only show what we don't know about God, can only show off our ignorance of who God is. This Psalm says to me that we can and we must bring our broken spirits and our contrite hearts to God. He is interested in our hearts. In spite of David's failure in playing the madman, he did have a broken heart, he had a contrite spirit, and he humbled himself, and he brought that to God. Now, this is not a time to sit and talk trash over yourself, and to say, when will I ever learn? I've messed up again. It's not an invitation to stay in a place of shame. Because the Lord is close to you with your broken heart and he will save and deliver you if you come to him expressing your hurt, your shame, guilt and remorse. He was near to David and he is near to you. This psalm is so tender. It shows just how close God is to us even when we are at our lowest and we feel so far and withdrawn from who we know we're meant to be in God. It's sweet and beautiful that in our humility and weakness and surrender, God is ever close. I wonder if there's situations in your life, cycles that you keep going through, and you just really, really long to know that God is close to you in that. Take a moment to reflect. How do you communicate with God? How often do you share your truest, most deepest, darkest, honest thoughts? That anger, that jealousy, that sadness. And do you communicate with God as honest as the psalmists have? Why or why not? Take the time to reflect. One of the coolest things about this psalm for me is that there's a lot of testimony in it. David starts off the psalm with praise of who God is and what he has done, and then he invites others. Here he is um, telling you to live. Here is how you live out your faith when your life and your heart are telling you something different. You live out who you know God to be not your circumstances to be. 
we all have struggles and you know being a Christian there's always going to be tension but this is an invitation and a reminder of how to live out our life knowing who God is and based on who God is not what our circumstances tell us let's just reflect on that for a moment The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and he saves those who are crushed in spirit. The Lord redeems his servants. No one who takes refuge in him will be condemned. Let's pray for ourselves and for the world around us. Father, while we're in this time of isolation, it's easy to constantly reflect on all the ways that we are not enough. Help us to use this time to draw close to you, to confess and repent to you, to delight, praise and worship you, and to be living testimonies of your goodness and of what Jesus has done for us. Amen. Let's pray for those who are in government and leading us to help us get out of this situation. Let's pray for our teachers and those who lead schools um, who are at the moment trying to work out the best way for things to get back to normal for you guys. Let's pray for wisdom for them. And finally, use this last prayer slot to really um, talk to God, share with him. Maybe you want to know more of him, you want to see more of him. Um, just use this time to personally connect with God from your heart to his.
great. It's been amazing to, to catch up with you and to have the privilege to share with you some of um, just what I've been reflecting on in my own personal study time. Um, we are back next week and um, during the week we've got a great Bible study on Tuesdays on Zoom, Sundays before this service we have a hangout on Zoom as well and just follow us on Instagram or chat to us in the WhatsApp groups. Um, we really love you, we really miss you and we can't wait to to see you very soon hopefully okay bye